Hey everybody, welcome back to the new season of the Hyperloops 2020 podcast. Uh, this is not an, a North Carolina alternative rock band podcast. This is about the card game, card and dice game, Star Wars Destiny. My name is Mike Jem, aka Bobby Sapphire, and with me are my uh, teammates. I'm just going to go around the horn real quick so you can hear everyone's voice. First up, we got the rookie Shane Martin. Sir Dappy, what's up Shane? What up guys? Rookie forever. Rookie forever. Also, uh, with us is former North American champion at Star Wars Destiny uh, Reflex, Andrew Cox. Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, that also, wasn't a, that wasn't a unique intro. You could have gone either way. Oh, oh I, I'm I'm leading up to something. Also, an erstwhile North American champion, uh, my hetero life mate Joe Cologne. What's up? Honestly, sarcastic. <laughs> I'm doing all right, doing all right, guys. How you doing? Current North American Championship. Uh, oh, yeah, and yes, that's right, Shane. I'm the current North American Champion at Star Wars Destiny, so only one of us on this podcast is not a North American Champion at Star Wars Destiny, so we couldn't name it that. Yeah. But <laughs> other than that... Uh, you here, you know your job, Shane. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, let's go. I'm ready. Uh, ready for Gen Con. Uh, so yeah, so we um, have podcasted sporadically. I thought we'd done something like 40 podcasts. We've only, we've only done 25 in three years. But we're going to try and do something, try and do this regularly because um, Shane and Reflex bought nice mics. Uh, Joe has that nice mic with the boom stand right there. It's looking real professional. Uh, I'm using a headset because I just don't care that much. Um, but we're going to try and give you some more Destiny content in the form of podcasts. So that's our plan. Um the first thing we want to do is make a PSA about the Las Vegas Open in case anyone is going to the Las Vegas Open. Uh, Joe, you want to cover this part? You've probably been the most yeah. connected. Uh, so Gandork and Yeti uh, had confirmed that what they decided to do was allow covert missions. Can you say for who those the, people are? Uh, <laughs> Pearl Nick Yeti Nelson, the, the head judge. Yeah. And Nick, Pearl Yeti is a The Sean. TO of LVO. Yep. The, yeah, so the, the, the head judge and the TO uh, decided to make covert missions legal for the Las Vegas Open. For the uh, grant, mm-hmm. yeah, it's the a grant. grant. Yeah. Yep. Um, so essentially, it's nationals, uh, it's western side, which is really good, and they gave the people what they wanted. Um, we're gonna kind of find out if FFG is like okay with that or not. But as long as the players are happy, that's all that really matters. Uh, what do you guys think? Yay or nay? Did you say the dates? Because the set release is on the seventeenth, and the event is on the twenty twenty fourth through twenty sixth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. What do you guys, the dates. What do you guys think of that? So it's the last weekend before it would become legal, right? Naturally? Essentially, yes. Yeah, it's one week before. Yeah, it's, it's like three before. days away from being legal set. Right, because it's usually the after the second weekend is when it becomes legal, and it's on that second weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's usually 11 days, so 17th to tw- well, uh, would be the 28th. And now, because they, the release dates are on the Friday. Okay. They yeah. switched the release dates from Thursday to Friday. Well, so I guess should we should start with Shane, since Shane, you're actually going. How do you feel about it? Oh, I love it. Like, this is... This is what I, I I love card games when you get to chase for cards and then play with new cards in a fresh meta. That's how I'll, I love to play games. So this for me is amazing. Uh, you guys have already seen a couple of my abominations that I've built, <laughs> <The> <laughs> trying to prepare as best I can. So um, yeah, it's it's uh, I love it. I think it's a great idea. Anyone else? Reflex. Uh, I I think it's what most people want. So I'm excited to see that they're willing to take. I think what it is somewhat of a bold stance uh, going against what FFG has said should happen, uh, but I think it's what the community wants. So props to them for trying to do uh, good for the community. Uh, I think personally for us, we generally thrive in those environments as shown by last Gen Con. So uh, I'm excited to see what happens from it. I'm, I'm one of those that's pretty bored uh, with the current meta. So it'll be cool to, to get a major event immediately upon set release. That'll be really fun, I think. Yeah, I think I'm most interested to see most interested to see how much the like current the balance of the big balance of the force that they just did affects it because we thought like that kind of change to the meta would lead me to believe that that wouldn't be the case for LVO I don't but not that they make decisions based on organized play um, but maybe I don't know I guess I'm just decided to see how it all goes since I can't go um, I'm just sort of very interested in being a spectator in a new meta um, I think I'd be fine if I were in Shane's shoes also I think like because normally we don't get our product the day of release, that it would stress me out a little bit. Um, but if you don't, ha- if you're not stressed, like how much are you buying, Shane? 
Uh, probably more than I should, but uh, right because, because of the event. The, yeah. Yeah. How I, many I, boxes? Well, probably I'm buying one from a local game store. Then I was thinking about getting the uh, deal that Yeti has, be, only because I could guarantee that he'll have the. I could be like, hey, you owe me those boxes at LVO at at the latest, right? So yeah. Have you asked Nick? For Canty? No, no, I haven't. I I haven't asked anyone. He's I'm pretty the... sure that. It, they just have to promise they can get it to me before the the event. Yeah, it's... I could probably ship you my case, <laughs> like just have it straight shipped to you. Are you getting a case? Maybe I have Wait, to check. Wasn't like... this on... Aren't we going to talk about this on the agenda? I don't know. Yeah. All right. Let's just move this up. Um, <laughs> what's your CM purchase plan? So you're you're basically looking at three boxes, Shane, and Yeti has a deal where he's delivering them to LVO. So just like that's a safety net for you. Well, no, it's just that they, he has a deal. It's a really good deal for delivery um, for three boxes, and I'm buying one here locally. Um, and I deal? usually do the deal's like uh, two something for three boxes, two fifty something. It's with free shipping, so it's like getting the the pre ordered eighty six. So it's like a map. Yeah, it's just a map at the at free shipping, so I don't have to worry about my local stores not getting enough or. But is he shipping it to you, or is he shipping it to Vegas? He would ship it to me as long as, but I would tell him I would, I haven't bought it yet. So I was thinking, Hey, I'll go say, Hey, are you going to be able to get this to me at Vegas? If not, are you going to have your stock at Vegas so that I can then just buy the, get the three boxes there. Right. Cause I, I assume since they run a store. They would have the, the product there. Okay. Reflex. What are you getting? I don't know. Cause I like, I don't even know the first time I'm going to play anything on, CM. I mean, we have. I guess we have a regional in, in February, but I have my seat, so it doesn't matter. Um, I did three boxes last time, and that's probably the most I would ever do. So I'm undecided. I'll I'll, I'll either get like the two to three boxes that I, that I normally would do, or I might just wait. Honestly, I might just hold off and see what's going on with it. Because mm -hmm. the third sets have historically been the weakest and the things you need the least out of. So yeah, they're also I the mean, least amount of time legal. It changes my plan. I plan to just buy singles. One mm -hmm. box, like, locally, maybe do a couple drafts, but because I'm going to the event, it changes my plan completely. Yeah, I think I might focus more on the draft aspect, especially since I don't care about the, the prime that we have, and then just buy singles. Yeah, I definitely wanted to go, like, Joe and I went to, for the last set, like, go crack a box, build a deck. It was, like, full price, not great, but it, like, supports a local store, and they kick you back $10 in store credit, so not terrible, and, like, we have a lot of good players in that area, so it's sort of like like a fun little night. But other than that, I, I think I was looking at like two or three boxes total max, even including that. So I'm surprised to hear you say you want to get a case, Joe. So it's not wanting to get a case as much as just I always get a case. Yeah. So it, get a case, complete my set, sell the extras, uh, anything I just don't like, I don't see myself ever playing. Sell just them. immediately sell them. Yeah, selling the extras in, in like the, like not knowing where the game is at in terms of like who's even playing or wants to buy it would be like really scary to me. Well, the thing is, is a bunch of you guys are only getting one box or two box. <laughs> so singles. you're selling us. <laughs> so <laughs> no, but the thing is, is just everyone's doing that. So then they're like, oh, I want to play this card. And what do they buy? One or two boxes because the game is, they're afraid it might die. And then I'm selling this card below market. And they're like, oh, look, I'll just get that one. Like, and I'll support the Hyperloops. Well, no, I that, but like <laughs> Joe can get the the boxes and people are going to be scrambling for cards for LD. Oh, for sure. So he could sell you just have to want to do the hustle. Yep. I don't yeah. want to look to do a bunch of it, but just enough. But, like, we get our case, we usually get it, like, three or four days later. So you'd have to, like, send it to Vegas. Well, that's why I said, like, if in this situation, it's not the same. But, like, if Shane needed it, I could just have it shipped to Shane. Fair enough. Comes out, he gets it, like, Tuesday, cracks everything and <laughs> takes what he needs and then brings puts it back. <laughs> then Making it back Shane do the absolute worst part about opening that's boxes. That's the worst. Luckily, I used to really. Be, I used your, to be a your dick child doesn't like to open it. Uh, oh, she, she's okay. I don't know. I used to love cracking packs. Like when I worked at a card store in college, I would crack packs all day. I just crack packs. I was addicted. But Destiny, I hate cracking packs. I hate taking the die out. I hate putting it somewhere. Oh, so nice. yeah. I, I could just leave it there, and Carla will crack the entire thing, organize it, and then sort the stuff. Carla, that's way to go. Come on, you're cooler than that. <laughs> hey, it's not, not, ask, it's not even me asking for it. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. My wife would crack packs too. Jeez. Okay. Um, all right. I'm, <laughs> I'm also gonna out. move. I'm also gonna move this next one up because uh, it's just a little bit attached to the LVO thing. Um, the, so the meta is absolutely completely dead right now. Shane, you're prepping for LVO. Um, first, I guess like let's hear from Shane what his prep plan is and just like sort of 
every from everyone just how would you prep if you were going to LVO? Like because we only see, we only know what forty seven cards from covert missions out of uh, one hundred and sixty, so less than a third of the set. And well, fifteen I think no twelve out of the seventeen legendaries are spoiled. There's still five left, and like there's crazy amount of events not spoiled which is like my biggest hang up it's like mostly dice cards that have been spoiled so shane what's your plan i don't know i usually wait till the whole sets before i even dive into it because i hate i hate the fact that i look at something and this looks really good and then three things come out that just blow it away or make it change and then all that prep i did was for nothing right mm -hmm. so um right now i'm just building what looks to be right you know vehicles seem to be positioned well palp still seems to be positioned well Bane's a cool looking character, so I might as well look at him. It's really just thinking about how certain cards can go in the things, um, and then trying not to be married to a deck too soon because it could change. Yeah, I think I'd be pretty scared about like going too all in on something like Palp or Relo, things that are like very obviously gonna be pushed towards the top of the meta based on like the, the most recent changes to um, the balance of the force and, and the restricted list and everything. Um, I'd be afraid that, especially Palp, is going to have like some sort of a silver bullet that could really hurt him. Um, Mind extraction. Yeah, I mean, and there already there already are some, but to, like there could be even more printed, like more. Um, I don't know. I guess like more accessible cards, like a like a gray neutral card. You know what I mean? That completely shuts him down. I could see something like that happening, just like as a balance check. Yeah, just remember how many like hate cards there were for Palp and. Raylo pretty much at worlds. There were there were a ridiculous amount of mine extractions and scorched earths floating around. Mm -hmm. And chopper. Yeah, well, that's, that's for Palp, but it's men in general. Like there were just people who were like, oh, intimidate for Raylo and you know, frightens and it's just like it was yeah, crazy stuff. People definitely mm -hmm. will play hate cards. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I would just be worried that there's even more coming out that that might make it even harder to play something like Palp. Although, like, I'm pretty excited for Palp, and I think like. Um, you know, I hope he's never in, in the position to just get completely hated out, but it does seem like that there's good technology for Palp no matter what. Uh, so what would you guys be doing if you were going to this event to get ready when you only have a third of the set built? If Lex, you could take this one. Uh, I, I hate looking and playing and building before the full set's out. I think it's almost pointless because the last card that comes out could completely change the meta or make an archetype irrelevant, so enjoying the time off like I've been doing and then just waiting to grind. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if there's much work really to be done right now. Yeah. Well, I think it is, if you were going, how would you yeah. attack, right? Yeah, yeah I wouldn't, I would be waiting for this full set. You, you do it all in a week? Yeah, he waits for, he waits for you guys to do it. I would it. be trying, like, okay, I, here's the real answer. I'd be trying to refine and uh, alter, update the current decks. Um, so I'd be trying to get a refined version of like new chopper, uh, pal, like, new villain vehicles uh, the current archetypes i'd be trying to get the updated versions of those so we have a baseline to go off of when the full set comes out that's the real thing. yeah and then just like slot in new things and, mm -hmm. and try new things yeah, yeah so like a lot of mine is new stuff i wouldn't be looking at the new archetypes at all yeah a lot of mine is like looking at the new cards um and kind of what value is there as well as reassessing the old ones because we did get the the point change so the point change kind of changes everything from a value perspective um palp two Finn look like they have some insane potential value so it's it's there's a lot of kind of reassessing what those are right now while we do wait on some other other stuff um and then just kind of seeing where the new dice cards characters upgrade supports kind of stand in the uh grand scheme of things with the other ones so like as much testing as i can get with any individual card so that i can just kind of feel them out like oh my god this card was amazing it didn't really do anything because my deck was terrible but this card i wanted it every time so then it's like, all right, well, where does this fit well? You know, um, but normally I'm looking for what is the busted card that I want to, like, abuse? Um, in the old decks, you know, it's always supports and making a million resources. Did we get a new resource ramp card? Can we run something else? Can something afford Mega Blaster and Fist without Delve and Theed? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, you know, you don't meet. It's always got to be Rainbow something, some three die, three wide, 25 to 28 health deck with fickles lots of fickles lots of fickles yeah um, all the fickles yeah i gotta say there was nothing and nothing felt better than when we were playing at that regional that i just like made a million dollars and i was like fickle at me bro there's no way you're gonna play any fickles against me that was a good feeling to not to like <laughs> have you opt out of the fickle war um 
Yeah, I think, like, I really like your point of just, like, trying all the stuff that's balanced. And uh, I think that's, like, largely unexplored. I don't know how many, I don't know how much people are actually playing. Um, you know, there have been a couple regionals with, with the changes. What, two regionals with the changes? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Georgia last week, and then we had one yesterday. And then Aiden Beckett won the one yesterday. What won the Georgia one? Uh, Palp. Palp beat Rayla in the finals. Right, so nothing like nothing crazy new, like none of the new bound, newly balanced characters, at least. Um, no. So yesterday our top four was two palps, um, a sad, and I didn't make it. Yeah. So it was palp Mahdi and palp Water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think I think there's probably a lot to explore there. Um, whether it will ever get explored because the balance was so close to. Um, the new set will, will be interesting. Also, will it'll be really interesting to see. I'm sure it's it's interesting now, but it'll be tedious to find out how long we're on the the covert missions meta. I think it'll probably I think it'll probably be depressing well, how long we're on the covert missions meta. If you really think about it, though, like the amount of the amount of time we've been on Spark of Hope has been insane. It's almost the amount of time as Legacies. Like yeah. we had a Worlds meta on Legacies, and Legacies in theory came out in January, even though it was like a February launch. Mm-hmm. So we were like five, six months in, like, wow. It's oh my god, look, there's a new deck. Yeah. And it yeah. was like, yeah. How long and have we been on last... Spark? Spark? Feels uh, like forever. July? It'll be July to January. It's the same time frame. It was July. It had to have been earlier than July, right? No, Gen no, Con was the was first week of August. Weeks before Gen August. Con. Yep. I opened those boxes at my old house and I moved into the middle of July. So it must have been like beginning of July. Yeah. It was a really long I think time. It was the second week in July. So we had three weeks. Yeah, we had three weeks, which was fine. That's why two, like one week for me stressed me out a little bit. Yeah, it was insane because we were hoping that Gen Con was going to be old meta so that there was some sort of tournament on it. And then we get that after Gen Con or at Gen Con. And then we'd have Nova on a new meta. And instead they were just like, nah, here's everything for the next six months. Sorry, guys. Bye. (laughs) Uh, All right. I mean, that's basically what's happening now, right? Like we got the balance. There's going to be like four primes on it. And then that meta never existed because we're going to go straight yeah. into TM. Yeah. So it's but literally got, the exact same thing as last set. But we got three balances for the set. Three. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. Yes, we did. Snoke? The, not the, was it Snoke? Yeah, the Snoke. And I don't know. The Snoke one came before Spark, I thought. Yeah, um, so that was the one where it was the, the balance dropped. Yeah. We had no tournaments on it. And then Spark dropped into a new meta. So it was a dead meta. Yeah, and we had military camp get hit. Then we had, oh, 3PO get hit, and then yeah, 3PO yeah. get hit again. Right. Yep. With the FC. Oh. He was restricted and then balanced. Or balanced and then restricted? Mm-hmm. He was balanced and restricted. Oh, in the same and, one. In, in the same one. And then they did and another, the they did FC. And then yeah. The FC restriction. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So taking uh, anything else on that, just like prep and, and how to tackle the new stuff? Uh, just, you know, there's always something new that could come out. Even at the end of Spark of Hope meta, I was building brand new stuff. Um, and I won my primes on it. But there's stuff there. You just have to, like, kind of figure it out and go from there. So I, I think even on a six-month meta, like, there's, there could always be something new. I think each of our answers kind of shows what our strengths and where we tend to lean towards, right? Drew or mm-hmm. Shane and, uh, and Joe are going to always look for new stuff and try to build new archetypes. And I'm going to look to refine, and you're going to fall somewhere in the middle. So, yeah, yeah, there's definitely been a, like I wish that I was more. I, w- I almost wish that I had an event that I cared about because there are a bunch of things that I've wanted to try. But every time I go to build a Destiny deck, I'm like, Ugh, such... no spots in Vegas. Let's go. Yeah, I already looked. I would have gone for X Wing, but I, I can't make the trip <laughs> happen. I tried. Um, which brings me to my next point, uh, or the next topic I want to talk about. So in Facebook, I think it was Facebook. Um, the head of OP said that X-Wing Worlds and Destiny Worlds will no longer be held at the same event. Um, yep. And then uh, this week, it was announced that the X-Wing Worlds will still be in October. It will still be at Roy Wilkins Auditorium, and but it will not feature. So it will not feature Destiny. Also, um, like, how do you think that affects Destiny Worlds this year? Not like we can talk about personal level after, but like. How do you think it affects attendance and just like what do you think they have in mind for Destiny Worlds? Um, because 
it was kind of perfect at Roy Wilkins. Like the, I wish we had more pictures of like from that balcony to see just how much space everyone had. It was not overfilled. It was not underfilled. It was like the perfect amount of room. You um, got to PM Harold and ask if he has pictures. <laughs> Why? Because no, Jimmy like, does. Because Harold was <laughs> no, Harold's like always like chilling in the corner <laughs> or the balcony or like away from everyone, just like peering at everyone through the red glasses. That's why he's got to ask him if he's got photos. Yeah, he's got to see. He's like, hey, those glasses have a, a HUD. Um, but yeah, so I guess like yeah, just hit me with your reactions to what this means for Destiny in general, and then we'll talk about personal reactions after. I mean, I uh, uh, yeah, I, I personally hate it, but I'm also a t- play both games, so I think it's pretty tough. I think it's going to be pretty hard if they do a standalone Destiny Worlds like they do for the other card games, um, just like at the Event Center, which is, I think, what we have to assume right now. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to have full reaction without knowing what their plans are for Destiny. But I think the fact that they're linked with Star Wars, and there's so many... I mean, we personally know a lot of two-game players. Um, I think it's overall negative, because I think a lot of those people that take one game seriously and the other kind of casually would go and play in both, and that bumps your numbers for both games. Now that person's only going to go to one. Yep. Um, so I think I think for both games, the numbers are going to be lower. The only thing I could think they could do is like they could make Legion. and Because how are they going to fill all that space? Legion is always going to be at a death count. The full world is at a death count. Always? Year. Always? Yeah. The now last, year, is- last year at FFG, it was just the top eight cut, basically, from Worlds was went to FFG. But the World Tournament is at a death count, and this year the whole tournament's at a death count. Okay, I thought they had announced that the whole world was there because I was thinking that they announced that it was going to be different this year for the. It's different this year, and that the top eight cut is no longer going. To soda. It's being played out all at a death count. Uh, okay, I thought it was the other way around. They were going <coughs> to do worlds. So, how is X Wing going to fill that auditorium? That's what I want. They could take just portions of it. So, when it comes to auditoriums like that, they they have big dividers. Yeah, they could just um, pull out the walls. Yeah, well, that's why I'm thinking it's possible that the price increased or they reduced the space on them. That's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. Definitely yeah, the, the space reduction is tough because, like, that's a big open air stadium, and like, there might be other rooms that they could put it in, so you, we wouldn't be like in the in the stadium part for mm-hmm. X Wing anymore. But um, it would be tough to hold two things in that open area because there's just like there's no divider that's going to go to the top of the, the the basketball stadium or the hockey stadium, you know. Like, that is stadium seating. It's a lot harder to divide it. Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing for me, I think the thing that gets under sort of noticed is just how many people, um, like, I don't think a lot of people play both games competitively, but there are definitely a bunch of X-Wing players who, like, played in Destiny pods and stuff, and maybe even yeah. vice versa, or played in the LCQ. There's just a lot of that small stuff that, uh, or people, like, play Destiny just to get the shield tokens or something, you know? Yeah, they did. They all love those shield tokens. Yeah. Well, now they're going to be an X-Wing prize, not a Destiny prize, so it doesn't matter. Um, they learned. So, yeah, I just I think that there's a, there's a few residuals. Um, do anyone else have any reactions on how it's going to go? I think I agree with Reflex that like it's probably going to happen in the FFG Center. I agree with Shane that they're probably going to have to pair it with something else. Although, I guess if it's in the FFG Center, they wouldn't have to pair it because the FFG Center is so, so like- small. Yeah. yeah, like L5R has its own worlds. Um, I believe Game of Thrones has its own worlds, and Keyforge has its own worlds. So they have a history of taking the card games and having their own weekends. Yeah, yeah and I just think like they don't have to do a lot. It's just like open your store, have a TO, that's it. Yeah, I was thinking more as X Wing has to be because I don't see other unless they're gonna like like you said break it out into one of the rooms. They're not gonna fill that auditorium, so it either has to be a space reduction or a cost issue but i mean they might they might like give a more of a lead time they might they might have plans to get more people there it's also a really weird situation when you think of the timing because they said they were going to get it in line with the organized play um like for the the scheduling and it's just like okay well we have both of our nationals or you know we have continentals at the beginning of august we have the uh, grands or nationals at the end of august early september where are you putting it that's not october 8th through 11th where x-wing is which is like like a month and a half later, two months later, considerably. It's like okay, now now let's say LVO is always January, so are we back to like this weird March, April, May worlds. See, Adepticon would be perfect for it if they were to do it there, but they can't. If they bring a if they bring worlds to March, it's gonna hurt because that's Adepticon, and then you're like looking at May, which is summer travels. I don't think it's good. What I, if, no matter where they put This would be crazy, but what if they made Adepticon Continentals and Gen Con Worlds? 
that would work time wise time wise and it would work for people that want to do other things because like well, going to gen con gives you some options tons but it of just options. sucks from a want, perspective i want less exclusive stuff at gen con not more yeah yeah that that's the issue like time wise for grinding it's really hard because you opinion, want you have other stuff you can do they should just have it at adepticon worlds at adepticon just flip it just keep destiny because adepticon is usually a miniature thing so you're either going to play like some miniatures and you play destiny as well i think it works out better than gen con because there's so and much so other that's where all the other star wars worlds are like that's yeah. armada and imperial assault and legion so all the other non X Wing minis games are at Adepticon already. All the Doom stuff. Yeah, I, I just more mean like uh, time wise. I can't see them putting Worlds in March, and I think it's more likely that they do it at the end of the summer. But it's Adepticon not that I would March. rather have it. Yeah, it's yeah. not that I would rather have it at Gen Con, but like time frame wise, it makes sense to have it at Gen Con and not Adepticon. Yeah, I would prefer to do both. I mean, I would still go to Gen Con. I'd be happy if Worlds were there um, because I'm going anyway. Well, what if, we could actually win a Worlds at that point. So, that's true. What if they put Worlds before. back in May and it was the the grand season started in like August. We had So we had August, September, January. Adepticon was a grand also and Worlds was in May. So then what is, what is Gen Con? What's Continentals? Continentals is still Gen Con. Yeah, but we're back to that awkward where Worlds is before Gen yeah, Con. Yeah, but the, the, the grand season lasts all year. So there's four grands and then Worlds in May. Or three yeah, but there were four of, grands of this year, and it was like no one went to any of them. Wait, what? What? There's mm -hmm. one grand. The, there we don't one. have anything at Adepticon. There wasn't a KC grant? No. Was that Never. only X-Wing? Oh, my God. Yeah. Are you talking about GQs? Oh, oh no, yeah. So St. Louis was only X-Wing and Legion. Oh, there was no grant at St. Louis. The only Destiny. Destiny grant we've had, or Nationals, no. is at Nova so far. LVO is the first non-Nova grant. Yeah, not other than Canada. Yeah, not ca right, Canada had one and two. England had one, right? <laughs> Twenty eight yeah, player Canada for the United States. For the United States, yes. right? Uh, yeah, well, it'll be re regardless. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, my gut says that it'll be at FFG Center, but I think it would be more interesting to tie it to a con. I think more people would go. What I don't want though is them to delay us the twenty twenty season again. Oh yeah, because they, they did that for October and they pushed us back five months. So if they needed to fast forward to May, it's like okay, like tell us something soon. But they did that for deciding... X-wing, right? Reflex when they when they changed this, they they had like two within one year, and then the next mm -hmm. one was a year and a half later. Yep. Yeah, because I think when I started yeah, playing X-wing, a Worlds had just happened, and then there wasn't another one that entire year. Yeah, so they did they did the shortened season, so they had six months in between two, and then they changed it again, and then went to a year and a half. Yeah, well, we was... already had our year and a half, right? I thought no. that was a whole point for us. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're for, not here. Yes. Yeah, but the, the I think the point Mike's just trying to make is when the schedule was moved up, they didn't skip the year. They had a six-month season in between. Yeah. yeah. So that, there's like, a precedent of them if they moved it back to May to run it again this May. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's yeah, take a six-month Destiny season. I, don't, I only want Rothermel to be the world champ for six months. That'd be sick. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, unless he won it again, then I would just throw myself off the balcony. Um, yeah, so personally... Uh, I don't know. Making two trips happen is definitely doable, but if I want to make Gen Con happen and Worlds happen and X Wing Worlds happen, I don't know. It's starting to get there's it's starting so many, to get a lot. There's so many other places I want to go than to Minnesota twice. Yep. I'm um, really gonna move it. I think. Yeah. I, just, I think the precedent is there for the card games to be at the game center. So until we hear more, I don't know what else to think. Yeah. The only thing I like about the game center is like it's cheap over there. Like the hotels are cheap. Sure, Joe. Hey, hey, look, it's a point. Your flight what is have you paid for a hotel there. Your flight is cheap and sometimes it comes down to cost, right? So like if you're trying to do X Wing and something else, it like costs being cheaper is helpful. Yeah, fair enough. Um I don't play that shit though, so yeah, I guess we'll just have to see. I'm very, I'm very interested right now. Uh, like I'm, you know, I'm hyped for the X-wing season to start up and start getting ready to qualify for Worlds, and we'll see about Destiny. Let me know when Worlds is up. When Worlds is up? Yeah, let me know when it's time for Worlds, and I'll uh, start, we can start practicing. Sure. Destiny or X-wing? Both. <laughs> Are you qualified for both? So he's saying. Yeah. Uh, is that the first time he mentioned it? I think I wrote down 17 minutes, but I left it downstairs. 
It would be the first time he mentioned being qualified. Every time he mentioned No, this is the first time. What? No. He mentioned qualifying for Destiny, Destiny the... earlier. I should have marked the time down. Uh, all right, let's talk about each person. Pick one card from Covert Missions that you're hyped for. Who wants to start? Not it. Uh, There's only one person on the uh, on the list there. All right, I, I will be on. Fine. I am most excited, not because it's going to be good, but because I'm hoping that there's some kind of, like, I don't know. I, I'm excited for Sabine. I just want my girl back. I don't think she's going to be good, but I'm excited that she got reprinted. Um, and I'm hoping there's some kind of synergy there with some other uh, Spectre characters that ends up working. Go ahead, Shane. All you, baby. All right. Uh, I am doing the same thing. I think this card will be underrated. I think it's going to be... There's going to be something broken with it, but it's going to be Krennic. Um, I think people focus too much on his Death Star, which is just irrelevant, but it also is like... I, I think creating the Death Star is way more relevant than destroying it, but uh, turning any die after that character to a value of one, I think it's super underrated. Um, it makes him easy picking uh, immune pretty much for if it's just him. And then, you know, threatening a discard or money. Yeah. You can always just set sick. up money. Cause it's, it's, it's um, any of your dice. It's not even just his dice. Right. Mm -hmm. It's any, any die to a value of one. So his I mean, are really good. And his dice are really good and health pools. Perfect. 13 costs is easy to work with. I, I He is all upside for me. I think there's going to be something good. Quenko will build a villain mill deck with him. Again. Oh, well, I was on late night, and I, I played a, Death Star, a constructed Death Star, and I had six resources on it in turn one. And it's crazy. Like, I, and you only need 15. And if I would have saw one of the uh, Death Star plans, I probably could have won if I would have saw it earlier, because you just, you just add one each turn. But... Uh, have, have they figured out their world's winning tech for this year yet? Uh, no, I don't know if they have yet. Okay. Uh, the card I'm most hyped for is uh, the Ghost. I I like love vehicles that don't have a blank. <laughs> and even though it has a blue side, which is a little scary, it's a, it's a plus three range side. Uh, so two two range sides, a plus three range side, a two disrupt side, which is really great. Um, a shield side, which is pretty meh. And a resource side. It's got ambush, and after the support enters play, you may activate a specter you control. After you resolve this die, you may give each character piloting this support one shield. Um, so it just does a lot for three resources, and I think it's probably uh, the best three resource vehicle um, that's going to be out there. It just does the most, and I'm pretty excited to reset it. I'm pretty excited to pilot it. Uh, I'm pretty excited to activate it with ambush. So I think it's going to be really sweet. And then one thing reflex i'm surprised you didn't mention about sabine is just like that new specter plot that gives you a point which i think is pretty sick yeah I, that's that's what i was alluding to when i said there's a synergy that works with her i just gotcha. it's it doesn't exist like it's not there yet so i'm hoping that something comes out to where that all works together it'd be cool to have a specter team yeah for sure uh what I do i say playing playing that ghost with the ambush and activating like Hera or then piloting it it just so Rolling nuts on that and then hitting. And then killing your opponent, Satine? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. you, Joe knows something about that. <laughs> yeah, there's a video of it. I'm just really excited that Spectre Cell is not at the same power level that it was in Embryo. You don't know that yet. Yeah, so I, I, I hope they have a cane. No, I do. I really do. Imagine Snoke being better than he was when he originally came out. That was the original sense, Spectre Cell. No, FN. Yeah, yeah, Imagine FN being better. If Spectre Cell allows you to run a, a busted ass deck, then like it, it did the job, right? Uh, so I'm taking the oddball out. Uh, mine's not a die card. It is a sail, which is a one cost event. Ambush, spot a piloted vehicle to remove a die. Because I love flanks and pin downs it's great. and automated defenses. And I'm going to take a second shot because I'm going with eject also for I the was ambush. Say, I'm surprised it wasn't yeah. eject. I thought you said that eject control. was. You said eject was poop when it first dropped, and I said you were crazy. It's poop from a perspective that you still have to pilot a vehicle. You from have to run this pile of shit. It's so good. From a value perspective, it's amazing. Zero for what? Heal two and two shields for whatever used up vehicle. Yeah, it's great. I can't believe you were That's, shitting on that it. Is no, because piloting's terrible right now. It's not terrible right now. Everything we have, it's poop. I mean, it's still it's zero not, for it's, two. It's, it's not even pilot. terrible with what we have now. You. You just don't get the shield. You only look at it as like an action sheet and not the, the effects that piloting gives you, like with the ghost. No, I want I want like a one cost solid vehicle. I'm not throwing my crate away. I want to throw away like junk 
and get this. If it meant that you were going to close out the game, you would throw your crate away. Sure, but do you need to heal two and get two shields to close out the game? That's to stay alive. Yeah, if you have yeah. another vehicle. If you have a you bunch of vehicles. It. I don't know if you've ever played a bunch of supports in, the, in a deck, Joe, but generally you like put like 10 of them out. I do. And then I play like field medics and stuff and easy pickings and kill my opponent. Yeah, and imagine, worry about my God imagine that was free and had ambush. Yeah, zero for four. Yeah, but that's like a round three card, not like a round yeah. one card. Right. Yes. You're not I don't want round three field. cards. I want round one. I want to assail people. You, you don't have Thomas Ambition anymore, Joe. You have to go to other rounds to play cards. No, round three. Dead. Round two, preferably. Okay. <laughs> what? Games end in round two. Yeah, for now they do. We'll see what happens with this new set and how they change things. Yeah, the change did hurt quite a bit. Go, Snow, go. Kill somebody. Yeah. Uh, that's all I had planned. I mean, this went pretty quick, but I'm not against a short podcast, so if you guys have anything else you want to talk about, feel free. Final thoughts? Anybody? Still want to know what she and training's going to do and how ridiculous it'll be. You think it's going to cost two? If it costs two, it's just too broken, right? It's yeah, going to cost, cost three. three. Yeah. yeah. Stays in line with everything else. I, I think I Bane. Why. I think Bane's uh, one thing I do like about the testing I have done is that I thought Bane was just going to be trash, but um, I'm finding out he's a little bit better. That two cost at the beginning, like getting four resources the first round if you draw the uh, the ability, is way better than I thought it was. Yeah, yeah a huge ability just is pretty nuts. The huge ability round one is just ginormous because they have to control it every round, and it's it's a big strain on like resources and like sequencing. So there's value there, but he, he he does lose a lot in the fact that his die is not kind of bonkers, I guess. Like, parts of it are, but the two shield and a single resource isn't. If he had a two resource side, I think he'd be bananas. Yeah, I mean, obviously two resource Yeah, so he's just good, not bananas. Yeah. He, I think he's just okay. Nah, I'm finding... I, I actually was going to ask you if you want to play a game after this, because I, I want to test this out, but I'm pretty sure I was oh, goldfishing. I was... What? A leak? No. <laughs> Later, I'm down for that. I'm off all week still. Uh, the no, like I, I was goldfishing and I was playing and I was I without any kind of need for getting a resource from a die. I was getting like a death field or a Sheen plus uh, another ability round one, possibly, and then going into round two with like an override into like a death field. Uh, so death field and Sheen on him round two starting off. It's crazy. I think two abilities round one with no resource being resolved sounds not bonkers. Likely. Not likely. Okay. All right, let's play then. Get a video out for the group. Ones, right? So I, I, well, he has to get one resource first just to play the death field, and then he needs to get another ability. Well, there's lots of things that get you resources that are not uh, dice. Yeah. Mm hmm Bunch of events. Yeah, got it. Bunch of events. Okay. Dead. No problem. Yeah, you can't do 14 round one with a Sheehan. This is riveting podcasting. Riveting, absolutely uh, I, riveting. Are you kidding? Our 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 back and forth, uh, coaching videos. I'm sure are the top watch coaching. <laughs> Shit talk. I'm sure that. that's exactly why they're. The top <laughs> well, why don't you just say what you're using to to get these abilities out rather than just alluding to it? Oh, that's that's fine. Uh, forbidden lore, right? Because he's a Sith, and mm -hmm. you're using abilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, you get that card. You're using you're using a small with him, so you have no problem using um respite drawing that card again so you're you're seeing that six card with two cards that you get money from um well, if i have that we did right well and i don't have to like i don't i did truce just because i was gonna try no good to be dead but that seemed a little harder at the moment but um yeah you do those and then he gets you're essentially getting that third resource you can play that death field right away um and then you know round two if you or if you have um if you have like a Sith teachings, because it's also really, really good, you just throw down that Sith teachings for free, and then you're getting, you know, money cards to play a Sheen for four or something else for two or three, and then um, Palp Saber, right? Palp Saber with two resources on it, you overwrite the Sith teachings, you go to four instantly, and then you can go and do all kinds of stuff with that four again. So, like, his, in my opinion, his strength comes from this overwriting and mixing around because. Death Field rolls in twice. Sheehan rolls in twice when you play it. So it's like you're looking to overwrite and roll these guys in and cycle them. Yeah, I really like both Sheehan and, um, and Death Field. I think they're going to be pretty sweet. 
I like that it's all separated into that. I just, it's just it's a weird situation because they seem to only be good in my mind with like pout. Like the initial usage is great, but I think they were so afraid of uh, Vader's fist that they didn't kind of maintain the extra. Like Deathfield kept it, but Deathfield also costs five, and that's that's a much bigger strain on your resources. Right, but then you, so again, I didn't mention it, but Delve, right? So I'm running Delve. So you roll, roll you put Sith teachings down. You have Delve, Deathfield. All you have to do is get that one money card, and now you're you have Deathfield, Sith teachings, with a Delve round one. I mean, people did that similarly with Fist. Yeah, it just thanks because if you delve first, you lost it. Oh yeah, you just wouldn't delve first, right? It, it's yeah. a little bit of a weird sequencing thing, but you just look for, I mean, you just look for the extra resource when you need it. If you don't need the delve, you throw. Meh. Yeah, uh, I'm intrigued. I'll be I'll be looking to watch some videos. Uh, all right. Well, if no one has anything else, I'm just gonna call it. Forty minutes is good with me. It's not bad for a first time. Not much going on. We're probably no, there's not much going on. Say that again. So probably not not much that we're forgetting, but there might be something. Yeah. Well, we can run it back next week. Hopefully, we get some some more news. I think we should, as long as we're getting news for Destiny. This is like, you know, we got an article this week, which is pretty big. We should get the OP article soon. Um, so this, this is a good time, I think, to get back into podcasting, because I think there'll be enough to discuss, and then we'll go right into LVO, and you know. Hopefully, just keep it going. I definitely don't believe we're getting an OP article soon. Um, all we the other told, games are getting it. We don't think we will. We were told early 2020 for all the non X Wing Early 2020 is in like three Next days. Week. Yeah, it's in three days. It's also in like February. <laughs> it's also in March. Yeah, right. fair enough. It would be great. I hope. I hope we get stuff, but I'm not. I'm not. With, uh, with the new second map, they always have something. I think it'll be below yeah. the 17th, right? At the very least, there'll be a shitload of new cards to talk about. I agree. I agree. Oh, uh, speaking of cards, because we did talk about it before, uh, I I don't know if you guys remember this, but the like the number one card we didn't see until the, the set had came out was actually Easy Pickings. We had no idea what that was until the, the set dropped. Like, it was, was never spoiled. It was never spoiled. Like, we were playing, and it was like, la, 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 la. And then someone, like, Easy Picks you, and you're like, what's that? I don't, actually, <laughs> is that, that card good? It was only a one of in the world, so... <laughs> yeah, just like Force Strike. He's just so, living the, the normal dream. Trash to you. So before we go, Joe just brought up a good point because this is something I wanted to cover. We I kind of forgot about it. But do you think that with LVO, playtesters have any kind of advantage? Oh, I did like, want to mention that. There I, you go. Talk about it. Yeah. Um, I think normally I don't think that's the case. But with only one week to go and knowing how few people play this game and how many of them are playtesters, competitively I mean, that... Yeah, I believe that the card knowledge is a pretty big advantage. Based on what I know of the people that play this game, I think you're okay. That that's <laughs> not that's not untrue, but I still think that it's a pretty huge advantage to know the whole set when it is when, when the rest of the world only gets seven days. If like normally, if we got like a month or three weeks, there's a lot of time, especially if like people are working together and like in the Discord communities, figuring things out. But with only yeah. a week and like some of that, so like some of like most of us are, are adults and have like lives and like some of that, like a good portion of that week is going to be like just fucking opening packs and stuff that you have to devote. Like your destiny time is going to be cut into by that. Yeah, it's going to make well, it even, real tough. I don't have a local that, really either though, so I can't even like play test with the new cards. Like I can't go in and I TTS is where I get my ninety percent of my play testing in, so I have to go and. Hope they update the DB and hope they update TTS and get that all done in the first three days so that I have then three days to uh, test. Get on it, Joe. Mm -hmm. Get on it. Yeah. Whoa, is Joe uh, here for you? Is Joe here for you? Yeah, is he not there for you? No, no, he's I'm down here. Below him. here. <laughs> oh, I've been playing to the wrong people the whole time. That's yeah, all day. All day. Um, yeah, uh, I, this, yeah I, I do feel that the, the card testers have an advantage here. Late Night did a lot of the, the dice thing, so I could have. Uh, a, a modified version of the mod up and running uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> it doesn't take me long, and I'm not working right now. <laughs> He's like, I got this late night token. <laughs> um, I just so, always have it on my desk to fuck around with. Realistically, if I'm messing around with it fast enough, I'll, you know, the, the, the person who updates TTS that tends to box. lose their shit and update it right away, so we'll see what happens. There now they're go. just showing Reinforce. tokens and stuff. Reinforce, baby. But, yeah, no, just messing with the new stuff's fine. And in general, it's we've never waited for the release date to test this stuff, right? We're, 
Definitely. Usually, like, a few days before, someone puts on the, the updates for what cards came in, because we got the, uh, the store owners crack boxes, and they're, like, already listing cards online, right? So we usually have some form of card text, but most of the time we get this card that's insanely wrong. I don't know how many cards I've read that were wrong. And I was like, oh, I'm going to buy, like, 12 copies of this. And then, like, we yeah. see the picture finally, and it's like, oh, no, this guy typoed real bad. Real bad. <laughs> Right, it's, it's just more fun. like it'll just be you and I and the, the team could like use it because like El yeah. Elron won't update the thing until the full set. We like it's actual release date. He won't do the release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that would still give you the week before. I'm saying if it if it was up and ready, if all the dice were made, he could do it very very quickly. Yeah, I and hope. If he actually copy paste, it would probably be done instantaneously. <laughs> F you. But yeah. No, I, and I think that there is. I was talking about with the Zion at least. I think there is a um, little bit of an advantage, but we have to also remember we got Del Fist. They let FC go through. They let all the other broken shit go through. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't think that most playtesters actually play games with the cards, but still knowing the events and like, like you know, you're a hundred events behind them. They know every event, and you don't. I. I don't believe that the playtesters actually play very many games, but they do know the cards, and that's a pretty big advantage. That is true. I don't think we've been concerned before. We won't again, but it, they're from a, a casual it's just perspective. It's the shortest short. window, though. Yeah, it's just because this is the shortest window. And it's just one yeah. of us. Yeah, <laughs> fair. But it's I not even that concerning, but it's, you know, it's There's sort only of one of us growing, but, the, uh, you know. The Wait, what was Zion's has take? to come on in full force. What was, huh? Zion's, what was Zion's take, Shane? Oh yeah, he agrees. He he doesn't think he he thinks similarly. Like he thinks that the it's not a zero sum, right? It's somewhat, but he he agreed with like the like the skill play level is not as high, but the card knowing is, I think, where it is. He wasn't. We weren't talking about just the knowledge. We were more talking about like um, having an advantage, like the advantage of being a skillfully building decks. So yeah. confirm, scientists, all play testers are trash. I mean. More or less, yes. Second it. Right. Second that notion. Yeah, and yeah, I put good money on Zion being a playtester myself. So <laughs> that's <laughs> me too. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I saw Snow get printed. I saw like fists and again. Life. I don't think anyone playtests. I just think they know the cards. That's all. Yeah, I think they playtest not like for FFG. They playtest for themselves. I think sure. like two people sleeve up a deck once, and that's it. And they still think aggro is great, and that's how. Yep, it's the relevant. Right, and if they're not building the right things, or if they're not, yeah, it's a whole. We that's just need our Swedish heroes again. On a side note, I think it was during our last podcast I was talking about yellow, red, two wide decks finally being viable, and it took really, really long for that to happen. It was insane. Iden Beckett's. Yeah, it's. Is Iden Beckett viable? Yeah, it it won primes before the nerf. I know that doesn't mean much, but still. I think Iden Beckett's always been good. It's one of those that you can like roll hot and be good. It's fine. It's fine. Hulk smash. All right, I'm gonna call it. Uh, thanks everyone for listening, and uh, yeah, I think should we just run it back next Sunday? I'm in. Yeah, I'm let's in. do it. Let's see how long we can go for it. What's the over yeah. under? Three three weeks in a row. Yeah, I feel like three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks. Let's do it. Let's get the. I keep us on folks. track. Don't worry, Put I'll your keep bed us on in. track, guys. Put your bet in. Right. Otherwise, it'll just be me. Um, <laughs> we don't have nice new mic except for Mike. Wait, what? No mic except for Mike. We all have nice new mics except for Mike. This is new. <laughs> it's just not nice. You've got two monitors. One step at a time, bro. One step, One at, step a time. at a time. Right. He does have two monitors. Oh man. And he has a, a, a Razer mouse now. He's upgrading. We're getting there. Oh, we all got the we all got the same mouse as the same deal. Nah, that was so I, good, I, right? I have three of them in my house, but I, I that's didn't my old it. that's my old mouse. It's it's over there. This is the yeah. one. It's okay. Yeah, he has a light up on the set. All right, this is yeah. this is really terrible podcasting. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> but uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Deuces. See you.